A few weeks ago, I put together a webinar called Things You Didn't Know Inventor Could Do it was actually part two. And during that webinar, I did an example of how to develop an object from a 2D image. And that's going to be the focus of what we're going to do in this video. Uh, along the way, I'm going to introduce several other uncommon features that you'll find in Inventor that kind of keyed into that overall idea of the things you didn't know Inventor could do. So to get things started, I'm going to open up this file. This is the file I built my demonstration on. Uh, I've already got a single sketch in here, and inside of that sketch, I have an image. Let's go ahead and activate the sketch and come in and see what I've got so far. I've got an image file. I use the uh, insert image command to bring in, I think, a JPEG of this object, which is the object that I want to reverse engineer. It's a, a gear with a serpentine spoke inside of it. I've already created the spline for one of the spokes, and I've created the cutout for one of the gear teeth. And that's all I've done so far. Now this image is not perfectly orthographic. So if you are looking at this in order to reverse engineer an object, obviously this is not the best image to start with, but it worked for the story that I wanted to share. So I, I wanna get started and develop a circle from this image. And to do so, I'm gonna use a really obscure command uh, in Inventor that allows you to draw a circle from three lines. So to develop the initial circle, I'm gonna draw three lines and I'm gonna start off here. And what I wanna do is I wanna draw a line that comes down and barely touches one of the top, either the top of one of the teeth or kind of goes almost parallel to two of the teeth. So there's one line. Let's go over here and we'll draw another line here. And again, I'm just gonna stop it just as it touches one of the tops of the teeth. And then right here, we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna draw a line and come down and just stop when in this case, it kind of goes kind of parallel to two of the teeth, which is absolutely fine. So here is, I guess the first obscure command that we're gonna to cover today, the things that you didn't know Inventor could do. I'm gonna go up to the circle drop down, and I'm gonna select the circle tangent command. This allows me to create a circle from three existing lines. So I can select the three lines, and I've got a circle that is gonna match the image that I have. Now I'm gonna take a second and convert these lines to construction lines, and then we'll move on. All right, so here are here is my circle. Uh, I wanna do some offsetting just to prepare for the final part. Uh, I'm gonna offset this circle. I'm gonna bring it down right about there. That's gonna be where the teeth are. And then again, remember this image is not perfect, so keep that in mind. It's not truly orthographic, but there is the outer ring. We'll bring it down. You can really start to see how bad this image is, how, how, it's, how isometric it is. When I get down here, I'm gonna use that right about there is the hub. Uh, here will be the center hub, and here will be the hole in the middle. Now, I'm doing this very quickly, so this is uh, obviously, if you are the aspect of Inventor where you are focusing on reverse engineering, you would be much more specific than that right there. But there is the initial sketch of our gear. Now, I wanna focus on another thing that a lot of people don't know about Inventor, and that is the fact that the first dimension in any sketch will scale the sketch. So if our goal is to make this full scale, this is how we do it. This is how you turn an image into a full scale image. You simply put some geometry in place and then you dimension the geometry. So in this case, all right, the outside of the gear I want to be 12 inches. So I'm gonna type in 12 there and watch the image and all the geometry. Everything's gonna scale related to that very first dimension. And that's how you can use an image as the basis of a, ver a reverse engineering project. The first dimension will scale the image to the right size. 
All right, so we've got that done. Now we'll revisit the sketch a little bit later, but I'm gonna select uh, finish sketch here. And I wanna focus on the spoke, that serpentine spoke there. Uh, another thing I've run into a lot with folks is that they don't know you can pattern work features. So I need a work feature at the end of this spline. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here to the plane command and I'm gonna select the point and then the spline and that'll give me my first work feature. Now again, you can pattern work features. So if I go up here to my rectangular pattern command, all right, I can select the work plane I need. Uh, I then can select direction one and pick the spline in this case. And it begins the, the traditional pattern method. And let's say as an example, I wanted a work plane at each end of the spline that was perpendicular to the spline. All I'd have to do is come down into the dialog box for the pattern and change it from spacing to curve length. The default to value would put the work plane at the opposite end of the spline. Now you can expand the options down on the dialog box and for orientation, select direction one, and this will put that work plane perpendicular to the spline. Now in this case, I wanna divide this spline up evenly by 10 slices. So I'm gonna enter 10 for the number of planes that I want. So again, some of the things that you didn't know Inventor could do, you can pattern work features. We'll go ahead and agree to that. I'm gonna turn the visibility of my sketch back on and we'll carry on modeling this uh, spoke. Now. The next thing I want to do is I want to uh, begin drawing my initial sketch. I'm gonna use this work plane right here to do that. Before I do that though, I'm going to need a work point where this plane intersects this spline. So let's add a work point. We'll select the work plane and then the spline that gives me my the work point where they intersect. Then I can sketch on this plane. Here's something that uh, I think a lot of people don't know about Inventor. F5, your function key five, is return to previous view. I use that one all the time. So I am sketching in the mode at the moment. I need to project my center point into my sketch. And then I can use an ellipse. Uh, I'm gonna keep this example today very general, but I'm gonna come out to where I think this ellipse goes and I'm gonna draw my initial ellipse here. Okay, so that's what I believe that serpentine spoke is gonna look like. There we go. All right, so that's my first sketch. And of course, if I had all the time in the world and I was doing a true reverse engineer project, I would add dimensions to that. But I'm gonna click finish and move on. Now, the next thing I wanna share with you is duplicating a sketch. I just did a video, it's the previous video on my channel about the, the new 2D to 3D process that I developed. And copying sketches and moving them from plane to plane was a very important part of that video. And I'd, I'd encourage you to go look at that one if you don't know what I'm talking about. But I wanna copy this sketch and put it on some to some other of these planes. So in the browser, I'm gonna right click on sketch five and I'm going to select copy. Now I need one in this plane right here on the first plane. So I'm gonna right click on that plane and select paste. All right, right here where the, where the um, spoke necks down a little bit, I wanna put one there. So I'm gonna right click and select paste there. Up here, all right, I think this plane is where the last profile is gonna be here. And then here, I'm gonna use a, a larger profile for a flare. Uh, it's gonna, that spoke's gonna flare out there. So I'm gonna copy that sketch to different work planes. Now, if you remember back when we patterned the work features, um, I can still uh, have traditional individual control over each of these work planes. So any of these planes that I you know, didn't use I can quickly come in and take the visibility of them off. So there you go, just the work planes that I need for right now. 
So this gives me the ability to come in now and adjust the size of that ellipse. You can see where the spoke necks down a little bit here, and I think it flares out a little bit here. So I'm going to put that in there. And the same thing up here. I think this last sketch, I think the spoke's going to flare out a little bit there. So when it comes to things that you didn't know Inventor could do, the next big one that we're going to cover is this, that you can copy sketches and paste them onto other planes. This is a great way to set up a loft and specifically a center line loft. So let's do that. That's our next step. We're going to use the loft command and I'm going to select, you know, my sketches in turn as we go through the part. And now that I've selected the profiles, I'm going to use the center line option this time and then select my center line. And this is going to get us really, I think, really, really close to what that serpentine spoke actually looks like. Now, if I had all the time in the world, I could sit here and tweak my spline and maybe tweak a few of the profiles, but I think this looks pretty good for the demonstration that I have here. So I do want to move on and I click OK. And that's really the first feature of our design. I'm gonna take a second here though and go and turn off these work planes uh, just to kind of clean up my screen a little bit here. All right, so let's go ahead and develop the rest of the gear. Uh, I think we'll start the extrude command and let's see, I'm going to take this wheel here and this wheel here. I want to do those symmetrically. I'm going to extrude those symmetrically. Uh, I'm going to come down to about five eighths of an inch. There we go. Click the apply button. We'll take the center hub and we'll pull that up about an inch. I'll apply that and we'll take this outer ring along with that little part of the tooth there. And I'm going to bring that down to half an inch. Again, if you're reverse engineering a component, it really is great if you've got the actual component sitting there. You can use your calipers to get this information and make sure that that's correct. I think the next thing I'll do is use uh, my hotkey for extrude and I'll cut this out. This time I want to make sure I'm going to cut this symmetrically through all. And it'll give me my first tooth. Then I can use the circular pattern. We'll select that tooth. And I know from just looking at the image that I have 66 teeth in the gear. Let's go ahead and use the circular pattern again for these, um, this, the spoke, the serpentine spoke. We'll send that around. And this is a very old gear. It's only got five uh, spokes on it, serpentine. Um, I really like the design. It's pretty nice, very pretty design here. I'm gonna click okay. And you can see, I think pretty quickly in this example, we've reverse engineered this gear to the appropriate size from an image file. I'm gonna finish up this design by adding some appearances. Let's go ahead and make the entire design galvanized. Uh, let's see, we'll select the appropriate faces here. And I got one more face here on the back. I want a brown color. So I like to use this appearance color here called chestnut. That just has kind of a chocolate color to it. So there you can see the final gear. Let me go ahead and turn off the visibility of our initial sketch. And there you can see the final gear. Well, this is going to conclude our example of the reverse engineering process, utilizing an image and covering a few of the things that you didn't know Inventor could do. Let's review what we talked about during the demonstration. The first topic that we covered was developing a circle from three lines in a sketch. 
We then scaled an entire sketch based on the first dimension, and that included the image that we developed this gear from. And then finally, during the development process, we focused on the process of copying sketches to different work planes. I hope you get a chance to utilize some of these tips during your next modeling session. If you liked what you saw during this demonstration, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching.